G'day folks, welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about the Levites. Specifically, I want to talk about why God chose the Levites for the priesthood and the ministry of the tabernacle and the temple. What was it about the Levites that God chose them for this service? Well, the answer might surprise you. God chose the Levites for the priesthood and the ministry of the tabernacle because they zealously and violently defended the covenant. I want to read to you a number of passages of scripture, two from the book of Genesis, one from the book of Exodus, and one from the book of Numbers. And I want to put all these passages together to show you why it is, biblically speaking, that God chose the Levites for the priesthood and the ministry of the tabernacle. The first story that I want to uh, read from is in Genesis chapter 34. And it's uh, a story where Jacob is in the land of Canaan and his uh, daughter, one of his daughters, uh, is uh, taken advantage of by a man and uh, Levi and Simeon get revenge upon uh, the Canaanites for what they did. Let's read this story beginning Genesis 34, beginning at verse 5, and it says this, Now Jacob heard that Shechem had violated his daughter Dinah, but his sons were with his livestock in the field. So Jacob held his peace until they came. Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to commune with him. The sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it, and the men were grieved and were very disturbed because Shechem had disgraced Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing that should not be done. Hamor spoke with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. I pray that you will give her to him to marry. Make marriages with us and give your daughters to us and take our daughters for yourselves. You will dwell with us and the land will be before you. Dwell and trade in it and get possessions in it. Now there's a lot more going on here in this passage than what first meets the eye. Abraham did not want his son Isaac to marry a Canaanite and he sent his servant to his homeland to get a wife for him there. In addition to that, uh, Jacob was sent to go and find himself a wife from his mother's people are outside of the land of Canaan. And later on, you'll see in the Mosaic law that God forbade the Israelites. He, he said the Israelites were not permitted to marry the Canaanites. They were to remain separate. And here Shechem and Hamor are offering Jacob and his descendants to intermarry with them and to share the land with them. And that would mean they would become one People. There would be no way to distinguish between the people of Israel and the Canaanites. And this would completely destroy what God was trying to do through the nation of Israel, in that he wanted the nation of Israel to be separate and to be a light unto the Gentiles. Now, it's interesting, Jacob and his sons agree to this arrangement. They agree to the idea of intermarrying with the Canaanites. Jacob did so legitimately. He wanted to intermarry with the Canaanites. His discernment was completely off on this point. However, Simeon and Levi, the two brothers of Dinah, they uh, entered into this agreement deceitfully, intending to destroy the Canaanites in this city. Let's keep reading. Let's go to verse 13. The sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor his father deceitfully because he had defiled Dinah their sister. They said to them, we cannot do this. To give our sister to one who is uncircumcised would be a disgrace to us. But we will consent to you in this. If you will become as we are, that is, every one of your males be circumcised. Then we will give our daughters to you and we will take your daughters to us and we will dwell with you and we will become one people. Now, of course, Shechem and Hamor agreed to this and Jacob as well, but Jacob did not know what his sons intended to do. Let's keep reading. If we go down to verse 25, it says this, on the third day when they were in pain, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took their swords and went to the unsuspecting city and killed all the males. They killed Hamor and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword and took Dinah out of the house of Shechem 
and departed. Now Jacob was furious with what Simeon and Levi had done. Jacob had fully intended to honor the agreement between his family and the Canaanites of this city. He had fully intended for his descendants to intermarry with the Canaanites. But if God had allowed that to happen, then the nation of Israel would never have come into being. Uh, the people of God would have been absorbed into the Canaanite nations and the promises of God would never have been fulfilled. Now, it's interesting to note that as you read the rest of the narrative, Jacob is arguing with his sons, Simeon and Levi. But the author of Genesis, which of course is Moses, the author of Genesis gives the last word to Jacob's sons instead of to Jacob, hinting at the fact that he actually agreed with what Simeon and Levi had done. Think about it for a moment. This uh, uh, book of Genesis is really being written down for the people of Israel so that they can know where they've come from and what God plans to do through them. And we know in the Mosaic law that the, the Israelites were told not to intermarry with the Canaanites, but instead were to drive them out of the land. And if any of them refused to be driven out, they were to slaughter them, to kill every single one of them. And so really what Simeon and Levi were doing reflected what God wanted Moses and the Israelites to do when they entered into the promised land. Jacob was in the wrong, but Simeon and Levi were in the right. Now, let's turn to the book of Exodus chapter 32. The book of Exodus chapter 32. And here in this story, uh, Moses is furious at the people of Israel because the people of Israel have been worshipping the golden calf. And he smashes the, the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments. He smashes them on the ground. And then in verse 25, he says this. Now, when Moses saw the people were in a frenzy, for Aaron had let them get completely out of control, causing derision from their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. And all the Levites gathered themselves together around him. He said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Every man fasten his sword on his side and go back and forth from gate to gate throughout the camp and let every man kill his brother and every man his friend and every man his neighbor. The Levites did according to the word of Moses and about 3,000 men of the people died that day. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, that he may bestow a blessing on you this day. For every man opposes his son and his brother. Other translations, such as the ESV, translate this last verse this way. Today you have been ordained for the service of the Lord. Here in this passage, the Levites are dedicated to Yahweh. They are dedicated to the Lord because of their fervent zeal and violence. They were violent in their defense of the covenant. And when it says gate to gate, I think it's meaning from tent entrance to to tent entrance. And some commentators point out and say that they were to go from tent to tent, checking to see who had repented of this idolatry and who was going to continue in that idolatry. And if they were to continue and if they refused to repent, then they were to be killed. And 3,000 people were killed. They were dedicated to the Lord that day because they chose God over their own people. They were zealous in their defense of the covenant. And that's what God was looking for. God was looking for, for people who would zealously defend the Mosaic covenant because intermarriage with the Canaanites always led to idolatry. And that is what was going on, of course, here. The people uh, of Israel were worshipping the golden calf. They were engaging in idolatry, and it required the violence of the Levites to bring an end to it. Now, it's interesting, in the book of Numbers, we have also another story where the, uh, the, the Israelites were, uh, uh, again, they were sleeping with the Canaanite women. And as a result, God sent a plague upon them. But some of the Israelites were so brazen 
that right in the middle of of uh, the 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 congregation that was to worship Yahweh, right in the middle of that, uh, they came and and brought one man came and brought a Canaanite woman to sleep with her in the sight of everybody. Let's turn to the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter twenty five, verse six. Behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought to his brothers a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the assembly of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tent of meeting. When Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the assembly and took a spear in his hand and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stopped from the children of Israel. Those that died in the plague were 24,000. Now here you see the zeal, the, the violent zeal in a Levite man, a priest, a son of Aaron, a Levite man. You see this violent zeal when it comes to defending the Mosaic covenant. He took a spear and he speared the Israelite man and the Midianite woman that he was sleeping with. He he thrust her through with the spear all the way through her belly. And because of this action of this man, Phineas, because of this, the plague was stopped. The reason why God chose the Levites is because the Levites had a natural propensity to violence in defending the covenant. Now, of course, today we don't defend the covenant through violence. We don't defend the new covenant through physical violence. But nevertheless, we as Christians and especially ministers ought to have a zeal and ought to have a fervent uh, zeal to defend the truth of God's word. Many people today are preaching false doctrine and leading people astray. But God wants people who will zealously and fervently defend the covenant. That is what God is looking for in people. And that is why God used the Levites. They were zealously violent in defending the covenant. And of course, as I said, we are not violent in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, but there ought to be a zeal and they ought to be really a, a kind of spiritual violence against apostasy and idolatry in the church. For example, greed is idolatry, the Bible tells us a number of times. And we as Christians ought to zealously oppose fervent spiritual warfare against the false prosperity gospel, just as an example. We ought to be against those preachers and teachers that turn the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ into a license for sin and immorality. We ought to be against the legalist who, who add rules and, and add things on top of faith in order for us to be saved. We ought to oppose works-based theology. We ought to oppose anything that is contrary to sound doctrine. We as Christians must never be physically violent, unless of course we're defending people, but we are to be spiritually violent in opposing false doctrine and idolatry. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell notification button. I'll see you in the comment section and you'll see me in my next video.